This week on Hands-On Photography, we're going to take a look at your pictures and we're going to talk about one of the easiest steps ever to make your composition a lot better. Check it out. This is Twit. Hey folks, welcome to Hands-On Photography here on twit.tv. We get together each and every Thursday at about 2 p.m.-ish Pacific time here on the West Coast, and we sit down and talk about different tips and tricks to help make you a better photographer or a better videographer when we start getting into video. Hope y'all are doing all right. I'm, I'm unbelievable, really, really glad to be here. And as usual, I appreciate you popping in on the live stream or just downloading it right now on your favorite podcatcher and hit and subscribe. That support really means a lot to me. It goes a long way. Thank you very much. But this week, we're gonna, gonna have a bit of a mix on the content, okay? So we're gonna build on a little bit of the stuff that we talked about in the first couple episodes, and we're gonna lean on some of the feedback that I've gotten from you all because I asked for a little bit of call to action from you by sending some of your images to hop at twit.tv. And yeah, that mailbox has been filling up. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. That, that means somebody's watching me, at least that's, that's not just my mom. So thank you all for that. <laughs> so today, we're gonna to start out with a little bit of feedback from my man, Mr. I hope I'm saying your last name correctly, Andy Silman, Andy Silman. Andy sent in some photos um, and the story that he wrote was just brilliant because we have all been there. Uh, he said that, all right, and I was in manual mode accidentally. I was in aperture priority accidentally and I was in auto mode accidentally. And sometimes, yeah, you're not going to necessarily have your camera set perfectly and you'll just pick it up and click the button and you go and look at your images and you're like, holy moly, what in the world just happened? So Andy allowed me to, sh to share these images and I wanted to, to show them with you all just so we can sort of do a bit of a review based on that exposure triangle so you can see some more of the real world analysis when this stuff happens to you. So all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you my screen and pull up this awesome album from Andy. And again, he, he shot it in aperture priority, which is your camera is going to say, you know what, I need you to, to focus more so on the F number in the exposure triangle, regardless of what I'm looking at. So make sure that I have F8 and just get the picture done. And that's all the camera is doing. And in a lot of senses, when you have that aperture priority set to a number such as here, where it says F4, you're saying, I'm putting in a whole lot of light on that image sensor. Just make sure this stuff gets done. And that's what happened here. This is a beautiful scene, but as you can see from his file name, it is blown out in the sky. It's blown out in the background. All of the whites are like super, super hot. And that could have been avoided had he checked this camera before he, you know, went out there to shoot. But sometimes it happens. So a good, a good, good, good step for you is when you're going out on your shoot, go ahead and make sure you have your settings squared away. Make sure you have your battery squared away. Oh, and also make sure you take the lens cap off. I've done that. I don't know how many, <laughs> how many times. Don't, don't act like you haven't done it, Mr. Victor. I know you've done it too, right? Oh, I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> but then you, you just disguise it by saying, oh, I, I want to take one more just Yeah, just, yeah, just one more just as a test. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. But yeah, if you look at this shot, it's, it's shot at a fast shutter speed, one two hundredth of a second. One two hundredth of a second or one two fiftieth of a second, that's normally what I would shoot in the middle of the day if I'm shooting, say, uh, people walking or jogging down the streets because it gives you a super duper fast speed and it slows down the motion so you don't get any motion blur. And when it's shooting at a fast shutter speed, you're supposed to get a bit of a darker image. But again, his camera was set to f4. So it's wanting in a whole lot more light, and that's what happened on this one. Same goes over here. This says F4.8, and this looks more so like automatic mode. Um, a lot of times, you, your camera will give you these sort of decimal point settings in automatic mode. You'll notice it more so with ISO. Every now and then, you'll see ISO will say like 
uh, 90 or 110, even though when you're dialing in the settings manually, it starts at a minimum of 100. So be mindful of some of those settings as well. This one here, this portrait, I really like this portrait. I like the composition of it, which is what we're going to get into here in a minute, composition. I like the composition of it, but again, he got stuck in an accidental mode at f4.8, shooting at a great shutter speed, but it's still blown out. And with it being f4.8, notice the background has a really, really nice soft blur and a nice little bit of compression. And she, the model, is pretty crispy, nice and sharp. Very well done, great composition. But again, my, my tips to you, just take a look at what your camera is set to before you go out. Me personally, my camera is almost always set to manual mode. And, but again, I've been practicing at this for quite a while, so I sort of know what I'm getting into when I pick it up. Um, as soon as I pick up my camera and put it up to my eye, I'm already scanning my viewfinder for the different settings. And if I need to change shutter speed, I can do it with just a swipe of a finger or press of the thumb or what have you. So get yourself used to practicing, practicing looking at what your camera is set to before you go out and before you actually shoot your shot there. All right. So thank you again to Mr. Andy. I believe he is Andy Silman over on Instagram. I'll put a link to his Instagram in the show notes for this here episode. Okay, so now we're going to move on to this week's topic at hand, and that is cropping and composition. The thing is, this is one of the easiest tools to make your, your shots go from beginner level to next level. And it's as simple as just cropping it down. Because when you crop your image down, you put in more focus on a particular subject in the image, and you're drawing the viewer to look at whatever it is that the subject is automatically. If you, if you think about, say, landscape shots, landscape shots are usually really, really wide. And when people view landscape shots, you think of like an art gallery or a painting or something like that. It's wide and you sort of just stare at it and just scan all around or what have you. And some people, they can appreciate that. But now narrow that down to, say, street photography. If you're going down your, your local town streets or what have you with your camera and you see something interesting or what have you, you take a snap of it and you're probably zoomed in pretty tight. By zooming in, you're automatically cropping down your image to focus on the subject at hand. Sometimes you're not going to be able to do a zoom. Sometimes you're not going to be able to walk up close. But you can just cheat a little bit in post-processing by properly cropping it down. You don't have to have Lightroom. You don't have to have Photoshop. You, you can use whatever editor that you have at hand. That's a pretty standard feature. So what I want to do is share Lightroom and go over a couple images here on my screen. And we'll just take a look at this particular photo that I shot, uh, looks like last year sometime. I remember doing this for some of my stock work. And it's a pretty wide photograph. And quite frankly, doesn't really do anything for me from a taste standpoint. <laughs> but if I were to crop it down, it would look a lot better. Inside of Lightroom and in most of the different photo editors you have, you'll be able to get these different grids showing up as you're going to crop an image. And a good general rule of thumb is to try to stay along the intersections of these grids far as putting your uh, subject matter. So if I wanted the viewer to focus on this particular glass of whiskey, this beautiful, delicious glass of whiskey, I would sort of crop it down like this and put it right at the intersection here. What this is called is using a rule of thirds. Now, don't get me wrong. The rule of thirds is not a rule. It is simply a guideline. It's, it's simply a way to just help you sort of make it a little bit better, but don't ever feel like you have to crop based on rule of thirds. I hate when people are telling beginner photographers, you should have cropped in rule of thirds. You should have cropped in golden ratio. No, those are just guidelines. So don't get stuck thinking you have to crop it that way, but try to practice it so you can see how it changes your composition. All right. So now we're going to go on back into Lightroom. But again, I cropped it down and you can see the intersection is in this upper, upper third and it makes it look 
a lot better. It still doesn't look great, but it looks a lot better based on that particular crop. And that changes the composition totally. Now, what I want to show you is the actual finished product, because I actually have a couple versions of it. We have this version here, and I've already gone through post-processing. It's been put up on my online gallery and so forth. And if I would turn on this crop tool, you'll notice that I have everything perfectly centered, okay? Because it's sort of a bullseye look, and the human eye, when looking at images or even looking at books, human eye naturally goes from left to right or straight on dead center. I don't care what it is. If you take a look at some of the uh, ads and billboards as you're going down the road or going down the street or what have you, notice how those ads and billboards are set up and notice where your eyes go every single time when you look at them. Nine times out of 10, your eyes are gonna scan from the left and go to the right or it's gonna go dead center. So the reason for this crop is I knew most people would want to see this dead center. This shot will work for some people. This shot is not gonna work for everybody. Now, let's take a look at this next one. Same glass of whiskey, pretty much the same edit, but it has a totally different crop. And the reason I cropped it this way is again, I'm working with that rule of thirds. I have it on this, this right third, if you will. But I'm thinking about if I was using this for, say, a whiskey ad. If you had this in a magazine or some sort and they wanted to put, you know, uh, verbiage to say, hey, come try our whiskey or whatever, more than likely they're going to use this space on the left-hand side, again, because your eyes are going to read the text from left to right, and then you're going to end up in the money shot, if you will. So that's some of the, some of the things that you can consider when setting up your composition, is just simply take a look at how you crop the image. Lastly, this shot here, shot this in Las Vegas. I could have shot this and just totally showed the artist painting this, but I thought it was a much more compelling shot to crop it down to only show his hands while he was putting this art together. Had I shown the full body shot or what have you, it would have been nice, but was, what was really fascinating and interesting is the actual art itself, the textures behind it, and that's typically what most people were gonna look at anyway if I did a full shot. Their eyes were gonna peek to try to see if they could figure out what, they were, what he was trying to put together. So why not just crop it down? Or actually in this case, I zoomed in directly onto his hands to make it a lot more interesting for the viewer, okay? Now, let's get out of my shots and we're gonna take a look at some of your photos that come in. This shot here, this came from Mr. Morgan Bow or Bow, I hope I'm pronouncing your name properly. This one, this one came to me and it immediately got my attention because of how it's framed up, not necessarily crop, but he framed up this uh, cell tower here to be quite around the moon and get your attention straight onto the moon in a pretty clever way. And if I wanted to crop it down, I can. Something like that. And I get the whole bullseye effect that we were talking about. And if I wanted to make it sort of off-centered, I can do that. And it still works because using the objects around, around the moon, he used that as an actual frame to frame up this particular uh, uh, view of the moon. I thought that was a clever shot, thought it was well done. It's not the sharpest, but all in all, this is still a pretty interesting shot. So shout out to you, Mr. Morgan. Thank you for letting me share that, that image. Next, I want to hop over to Miss Priscilla Zhang. She sent this in, and this is a pretty standard shot that you're going to see all over social media. You're going to see it all over some of your favorite greeting cards, and it's, it's, it's a classic shot. But it could be a little bit better just by doing a simple crop. All of this area up here at the top does not contribute to the image. It's just, it, it just doesn't. So let's go ahead and bullseye this. Crop it down even tighten it up a little bit more like so. And it's a better image. You put more focus on the gentleman on the bench and not as much focus on the background, okay? Now there's, there's a couple things that I did notice on her shot here and hopefully she's watching this. Uh, I, I'm wondering if she shot this in portrait mode because if you zoom in, you see you have this blurred background 
but you'll notice some of it didn't quite get blurred out around the subject. Now there's a quick fix for that. I can clearly just hit K on my keyboard, hop over here, we'll say soften skin, and I can just sort of fix that in post just like that. Take that sharpness down, clarity down, smooth it out like so. And that looks a little bit better. Now granted, most people are not going to see this line of detail at first glance. I'm sorry for pixel peeping, but I have, a, I have a tendency to do that from time to time. But that's just another little detail to watch when you guys are using your smartphones and using portrait mode. Sometimes you're going to get a, a, an image that's, the subject looks really, really, really sharp and every now and then it will mess up the focus and give you some little artifacts like that. So just, just keep that in mind. But anyway, back to composition. Before was like this, okay? Nice shot, but it could be a little bit more focused, if you will. Crop it down, put more focus on the subject at hand and not the background there. Much better. Thank you, Miss Priscilla, for sending that over. Uh, you can follow her over on Instagram at it is really, really spelled differently. P R Priscilla Zing. <laughs> it's right there on the screen. Give her a follow over on Instagram. Thank you, Miss Priscilla. This shot. Now, this one got my attention. Number one, because it is a beautiful, beautiful sunrise shooting through the clouds from my man Kamal. Um, but again compositionally standpoint why not put more focus on it let's go ahead crop this down because all of this on the right side of the frame does not add to this image the sun is the star of the show no pun intended to all of my science nerds let's go ahead and crop that in like that if you want to make it off-centered a little bit fine but still make that beautiful sunburst the subject matter. That looks a lot better automatically. I will give kudos to Kamal on this because notice the horizon line. A lot of times when you catch images online, the horizon line is off like that. And it drives me nuts because the world does not look like that when you, <laughs> when you look out. And that one little small detail can make or break an image. So be sure if you're not able to capture it with the proper horizon line, at least fix it in post to give yourself a nice, beautiful horizon line. Nice work there, Kamal. If I were to do one more thing to touch this up, oh boy, we're gonna go ahead and hit these highlights. Bring those down a little bit. Because when I bring those highlights down, those sun rays really do burst and pop through there. Beautiful, beautiful shot, my man. There. Simple, simple composition step that doesn't take a whole lot of effort, just a little bit of effort, okay? Lastly, this one here from Ariane Cook, sent by Mr. Uh, John California. I appreciate John sending that over to me and giving Ariane the credit. Again, the composition on this, what works for me is this leading line because if you follow this leading line all the way up, boom, you have a payoff with this beautiful sun in the end. But there's me nitpicking. I'm gonna to try to get rid of these trees because these trees do not add to the image, nor does all of this upper sky add to the image. And then if I want to get really clever, I'm putting that intersection right on the sun. So I'm giving, I'm giving the viewer multiple wins, if you will. So we'll turn that off. And if we want, we'll hit these highlights again, turn that down, turn the dehaze up just a little bit. Oh yeah, looking outstanding. And if you want, why not put a little bit of a vignette on this thing? Something like that. Boom. Now that took a whole, what? I don't even think that took 30 seconds, Victor, right? Just, just hopped yeah, in, no. cropped it. Yeah, that was, that was like a few seconds. Yeah, and that, is, that, that looks 
a lot better. And this could, you don't need Lightroom for this. You could do this on your mobile phone in the uh, native mobile phone editing app, whether it's on iOS or Android. You could use Pixlr or any of those other free apps that we talked about in episodes one and two. Okay, so that's it for um, checking out some of the uh, feedback that you all sent us in. I really do. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, let's go back. I got one more piece of bonus footage. This is another one of mine. I don't typically toot my own horn, but I just want to set an example for you folks. I remember shooting this at my beloved coffee shop in Charlotte, North Carolina. And as this shot was lining up when I had my uh, cup of coffee, all I could think about was framing. And I used it to my advantage because this person is actually waving through a window frame. Even if I wanted to crop it down a little bit more or what have you, I could. But this is a much more interesting photo because of how it's cropped off. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Because of how it's cropped off. And this one got a whole lot of attention over on my social media um, because of the color, because of the composition, because of the energy and a little bit of creativity that was used where I took the actual surroundings and made a frame for this person's portrait without actually using a frame. <laughs> but that's just the kind of things that you can take advantage of when you're out and about um, shooting your, your images. Take a look at what's going on around you. Take a look at what's going on around your subject. You can anchor people in and frame people in with buildings. You can frame people in with shrubbery, trees, other people. Uh, it just, just, just think of it sort of as, as a rectangle or square and just sort of hone in on your subject and take a look what's going, around, going on around them and move yourself in, into the right position where you can frame them up, whether it's left, right, up, down, or even taking a few steps forward. It'll make a big difference in your photographs. All right, folks, that is it for this week's episode of Hands-On Photography here on twit.tv. Thank you all so much for that continued support. Please keep sending in your photographs at hop at twit.tv and come back on over here next Thursday at about 2 p.m. Pacific. Uh, do the math on the UTC and Eastern time. I don't know, but I'm always <laughs> 2200. Is that what it is? 2200 UTC. So hop on back over here next Thursday and check us out. Uh, we really do appreciate the, port, the support. Be sure to hop on over to twit.community and join our online forums. That way you can see what's going on with the rest of the folks that watch our shows and just have some chit chat, some behind the scenes chatter here and there. And uh, you can also check out some of our other shows on the network too that are mentioned right there in the community, such as Triangulation, iOS Today, Tech News Weekly, and more and more and more. All right, folks, until next time, hit us up with that subscribe button. Get out there, create and dominate. Let's get it done, baby. Take care.